everyone, Christian here, and I'm going to do a video that covers a few topics. The first is going to be the genus of Butea and why many of the palms you may see as the common pindo palm, which is known as Butea capitata, is not actually that species. Also, its growth patterns in Florida, why it's not uh, good to grow in South Florida, and also I'm going to cover some rogue plantings, and I'm going to go over that in uh, a little bit later on in this vlog. So first I have here... Um, I'm in the neighborhood in Venice uh, near where I live at the moment and I These palms these two butias have been here as long as I have lived in this area for since 2004 uh, You know on and off so uh, you have two different butias here. You have this one that has longer more tropical leaves and this one has shorter petioles and it's more curvier more kind of upright and stout um, and this trunk is obviously much wider than the diameter is much uh, bigger than this one here and so uh, there can be a couple of reasons for that there can be <clears throat> one being that uh, this one has just gotten more water right here and this one has not gotten as much water and they can sorry it's kind of loud there uh, and but and that has happened. You'll see a lot of variations in butias for those reasons. You'll see some that just live in drier areas versus some that are just getting regular irrigation and are just uh, really just like kind of taking off for lack of a better term. This almost looks like a mule. It's not a mule. Um, it doesn't have the typical characteristics of a mule. Um, so I can, you can rule that out. Uh, yeah, it does not have the growth rate of a mule either. This is probably only two feet, uh, Taller, I mean, two, two feet more trunk since in 15 years since I've been here. So this is definitely a full butea. Now, are these the same species? It's possible that they're the same species. However, it was recently discovered that the common pindo palm, what we know as butea capitata, is not actually most, or I'd say 90 something percent of them are not actually butea capitata. They're, they are but, either butea catariensis from the Catarina state of Brazil or that could be Butea iriospatha, or a couple other species that were variously collected throughout Brazil uh, and Paraguay throughout the 20th century. So, um, I would, if I had to, if I had to venture a guess, I would say that this is, I would say that this is uh, neither one of these are actually Butea capitata. Uh, what they are, I'm not a Butea expert because they just don't grow very well in this area, and what I will explain why they just don't do as well in southern Florida versus northern Florida. And it really, uh, it really uh, comes down to uh, climate. And you know, right now it's the middle of winter and it's almost 80 degrees and we don't really get that cold of a winter. Uh, it does get chilly here in Venice. However, we don't get like an extended period of cold where there's, you know, I, it, it happens. But on a yearly basis, we do not get the chilly weather that say even a place like uh, Tampa or just north of Tampa can get uh, where you know you're not going to get above 60 degrees for maybe a week and that can happen somewhat regularly even just 80 miles north of here so if you go further south now butias still do pretty well here if you go south to Miami go and try and find some butias and you'll find that you're gonna either find them in rough shape or you're not gonna find much of them at all and butias are actually quite rare uh, in southeast Florida, you know, Palm Beach, Broward, Dade. It's a little bit different climate. It's wetter, it's hotter, it's milder. Uh, there's less temperature differences and it's just more of a, you know, tropical climate. Uh, you also don't see these very much in say Cape Coral, Naples. Around here is where you start seeing a few more of them. So, um, and you know, up in the Tampa, Orlando, uh, Daytona Beach, definitely. And then when you get to the, the best looking butias in my opinion, are actually, if you go from Gainesville north in the say Tallahassee, Jacksonville, uh, Savannah, um, you know, just that South Georgia, uh, North Florida area along the Gulf Coast, uh, they, there's some beautiful bl blue ones that just, they just love that that climate. That's really kind of what they come from, that, that chilly winter climate. Uh, not cold, but just a little bit chilly. So a lot of 40s and 30s and 40s. So, um, so yeah, so the, when you see the common, what you know is the common pindo, and you see these variations that are going on, uh, you know, within this species, it's 
most likely a different, di these are two different species all together and neither one is Butea capitata. So I kind of wanted to just kind of explain that. It's kind of been discussed in the palm community. Uh, it's more likely that this could be Butea capitata just from the nature of the leaflets, how they're very, uh, very st upright, stiff, uh, recurved, um, and they, it has a thinner trunk. This fatter one, you know, these are kind of the, you know, the, the ones that are more typical of what I have seen as Butea catariensis. Uh, it's really hard to say. Like I said, I'm not a Butea expert. That's my best guess. So um, now that I've discussed these Buteas here, I'm going to discuss what we call, on the, at least in the palm community, we call it rogue planting. So rogue plantings are kind of like volunteers. And I don't know if I've done the video on volunteers, but a volunteer is essentially, excuse me for the wind, it's quite windy today. Volunteers are essentially palms that produce drop seed and a uh, seedling comes up and grows up to its own plant without the help of any, you know, of any human interaction. So, or intervention, I should say. Um, so, rogue plantings are plantings of palms that are done by human, you know, interaction or intervention. They plant them uh, in areas, but then it looks like they, uh, they're usually done in areas that are uh, not normally seen by the public or just kind of in the back or just kind of just kind of throwing to make them look natural so you can see here you know you have two native palmettos that have obviously been here for a long time they have no thatching they've got a nice gnarly trunk uh and i'd say both of those are at least 30 to 40 years old then you have a, a yucca and I, I forget the name i think it's yucca elephantipes I, I don't know i'm not i don't know my yuccas nearly as well um but you know, it's just, you can see how old it is. This is probably planted when this whole field was set up. This area was built in the the 60s and early 70s. And I believe that this could be as old as that area. You can see it has been growing in shade for quite some time. So this, these being, I mean, these are quite tall. There are, some of them are up to 15 feet, the trunks. So, but I also want to show you palms that have been kind of, or I should say a palm, so if we can walk down here. There's another one of those yuccas. Again, I could have the species wrong, but that's what I know is elephantipes. And here we have a European fan palm. We have Shamrops humilis. And this is actually a pretty decent sized one. You know, it has a, it's not very tall, but it has a good amount of trunk. It doesn't get any help. Rogue plantings usually just kind of grow up and do well on their own. They're not, you, you're not, you're not gonna rogue plant a very temperamental palm for your climate. So, for example, in Florida, you're not going to rogue palm, I mean, rogue palm, rogue plant uh, a palm that's, you know, very cold. Scent. Like, you're not going to rogue plant a, a, a lipstick, a cedar statues. You're going to try and rogue plant maybe some natives that don't not, not grow in that particular area, like Cocoa Thrinax. And I have some friends that do that. And, uh, you know, with them being natives, I have no problem with that at all. And Or if they're not invasive. And uh, Shamrops is not invasive. It's a very slow growing uh, palm, but it, you know this this kind of looks kind of interesting. You're just kind of going along. You see, you see this is all native here. And then you get here, and you're just kind of like, oh hey, you know there's there's some palms that kind of like look out of place. And then it's interesting because when I'm driving around, you'll see this, and you know that you know someone just decided just to plant this here with really no expectation. And this has probably again been here 20 to 30 years. So uh, yeah, and this orange bird, it looks like it what you know it looks like it's been manicured or taken care of except for the it, it just looks symmetrical but they all kind of look symmetrical so this is probably a rogue planting as well people will randomly plant stuff here there's some mulch beds so uh there's actually a plant sale going on here but i'm not sure i didn't see anything interesting i for lack of a better term it looks like a lot of like cuttings from other plants like aloe bromeliads i mean they're they're nice but i'm not going to pay for that when i can get them from I can trade with friends so I'm sure there's a lot of interesting plants for sale I hope people here get into plants more so as the population gets out of control so uh <laughs> so yeah that's you know rogue plantings I can show you some other rogue plantings in some other vlogs and some other areas the traffic part of why I haven't done a lot of vlogs uh in the past month or two is the traffic is so bad this time of year that getting to a location that normally would take 10 minutes can take up to 30 minutes now, uh, depending on the time of day. Even to, even in the morning now, because most people here are retired, the traffic's just horrendous. There's a lot of construction in the areas I want to go to, and I just don't have the ability to take you know a couple hours out of my 
weekday, unfortunately, just to do like a 10 minute vlog. Uh, and so I'm kind of trying to do that. Obviously, the sun sets earlier, so I can't go later on in the evening unless you want to see a night vlog. So anyway, you can see this is Venice Gardens Park. It's uh, not like a hidden secret or anything. But, uh, you know, there's some plantings here that were done before, uh, you know, there were a lot of certain regulations saying, hey, don't plant. Like, for example, this, this ficus here. Like, no one would ever plant that nowadays just because ficus is considered a, an invasive uh, plant. People still plant it, but they wouldn't, like, agree to plant that today. Uh, it just isn't really a... It isn't a good choice when there's so many other better native choices. There's, there's kind of a movement to go back to native... Uh, planting. So anyway, I'm going to leave that there. Hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. Uh, it was a little bit different. I hope you guys are happy to kind of see some vlogs going back up. And uh, we did give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel you want to see more uh, palm and plant related vlogs and some live streams, go ahead and subscribe and hit that uh, bell notification. I do go live uh, occasionally and I tr I'm going to try and do it regularly once again. And if you have any questions about uh, butias, um, I can answer them to the best of my ability. Uh, or if you have any questions about rogue plantings and the, the ethics behind it, um, I'm happy to do that as well, to uh, discuss that as well. Uh, I'll leave it down below and I'll get back to you guys as soon as I can. And thanks for watching.